Scott Cantell here with LSI, and I have the pleasure of speaking with uh, MedTech legend and my dear friend, Manny Villapagna. And um, it's an honor today to have you, Manny. If you can uh, give, a, give us a quick background for those that don't know you, give us a quick background on where you've been and what you're up to these days. Scott, as always, it's great to see you and do look forward to uh, our meeting uh, later on this year in California there, particularly when it's uh, 18 below zero coming up to, uh, tomorrow here in Minnesota. But we've been historically developing medical products from a long, long time, starting with the first lithium powered pacemaker, which became a company named CPI, which became Guiden, which is now owned by Boston Scientific. And then we started developing heart valves and replacing the old standard valves with a new type of valve made out of pyrolytic carbon. And that was the St. Jude valve that went on to become the most commonly used prosthesis in the world. And it probably has somewhere around five to seven million people walking around with that valve. We've added other products uh, and we're now working on our eighth uh, company called Medical 21 in which we're trying to develop a new way of doing bypass surgery, that is cabbage surgery on the heart. Uh, we have developed a artificial graph, an artificial artery, I should say, uh, which can be used not only on the heart, but in other vessels. Uh, and we hope to begin our clinical trials in, later on in 2021. We have been able to do all of these things uh, through financings, uh, of common stock. We we have been able to uh, develop these companies and then later on take them public. I've done seven public offerings and then eventually virtually every one of the companies have been bought out by various strategic partners including Medtronics and St. Jude's and, and a variety of different companies. So um, we're excited that we can we're doing this and hopefully uh, later on in May, when we meet, uh, the audience might hear a little bit more about Medical 21. Great, Manny. So not, not everybody knows your background. Um, just sort of to step back, what, what inspired you? I know you became an entrepreneur at a very, very early age, but what inspired you? Uh, and, and how do you rank, as a second question, how do you rate Medical 21 uh, with all the other ventures that you've been running. Obviously, uh, you don't have to be working right now. You're doing this because uh, you feel strongly about the solution. So question one, what, what inspires you to be an entrepreneur? How did it get started? And question two, how does Medical 21 rate in terms of your other ventures? Well, you know, when I, be, I began doing CPI after I had spent two years in Latin America working for Medtronic, in which I was the Latin American sales manager, and during that time, we were implanting pacemakers that were as big as a hockey puck. Uh, they would last 12 to 18 months, had a terrible reliability record. And I proposed to Medtronic uh, that there was a new power source available. Why don't we make a, a lithium power pacemaker? Uh, I was rejected. I was turned down and said goodbye for so long. In fact, I remember the president of the company taking my badge off of me and walk me down to the front door of the building and out the door. So uh, all of a sudden I'm out of a job, <laughs> okay? And uh, I put together a team and we started to develop the lithium powered pacemaker. And in fact, uh, behind me, as we were talking about things that are on the wall, uh, right over here, uh, there is a pacemaker that we developed and is still running 47 years later. And that particular pacemaker was in a patient for 24 and a half years. It was removed. I took it and put it on the load, and it's still running 47 and a half years later. That was a successful company. It was finally sold to Boston Scientific for $27 billion. Now, to answer your question about what about Medical 21? Well, if one considers that when I started CPI, there was maybe somewhere in the neighborhood of about 60 to 70,000 pacemakers implanted per year. And when I started St. Jude, which, by the way, was sold for $30 billion, 
and that market was only 65,000 um, 65,000 valves per year. And one considers now that Medical 21, the market today, we are implanting in the world between two and three million grafts per year. One considers that we have a good possibility of becoming a major company in uh, the cardiac area. In fact, I feel that the product we're working on now is the biggest single product ever developed for the cardiac area. It's bigger than all pacemakers and all heart valves combined. Uh, so, you know, we should we should be successful. And as I said, we hope to begin our clinical trials uh, later on this year. So that answers uh, that answers my question. And you know, many of us would only dream to be in the position that you're in today. And um, knowing you uh, as a guy, I know that you can't sit still and you just love doing this, but clearly there's a big problem out there that you're trying to solve. So it's great to hear that update. Um, tell us about your current financing situation. Are you raising capital? If so, how much can you share with us or do we need to wait until May to find these details out? Well, well, right now we, um, when we started this project, we were looking for about $10 million. We have raised about seven. We're still looking for about three to five. Uh, we have um, uh, a few people knocking on our door and we're negotiating and we might be able to complete our needs uh, by May. But once we hit May and once we begin our clinical trials, we are going to be probably pursuing a IPO or maybe it could be a venture fund that has a lot of money because we're going to need about 50 to a hundred million dollars that we're going to need in an IPO. Uh, again, I mentioned that I've done seven IPOs. So when people ask me, why are you doing an IPO? I said, Hey, that's where the money is. And if I've done it successfully seven times before, why would I not try to do it the eighth time? Uh, so, and there are people knocking on the door on that and say, Manny, when you're doing your, your clinicals, we'd like to be doing an IPL for you. And I said, okay, when we get there, we'll sit down and talk. Tell us, uh, share with me a little bit about your experience. You had an event this past uh, February. You were kind enough to not only spend time telling us about Medical 21, but we also had a really fun uh, keynote uh, fireside chat discussion where you gave us, you had more time for you to really share the full backstory. But tell us about your experience uh, at the event in February, and will there be any surprises that we're going to hear in May, or again, are we going to have to, to wait to, to, to hear all in person? <laughs> well, well, when back then we were developing a new technique to make our graphs because in our initial intervention with the doctors, uh, they were requesting more graphs than we could ever consider making it. Uh, we had to change our method of manufacturing, and that's what we have done. And so as a result, uh, we are, in fact, uh, starting in about a week or two, we will again begin our animal trials with the new techniques, uh, which promise to allow us to make the, the graph in large quantities that we will need. I mean, when I started talking to some physicians, I mean, the number of graphs that a doctor does at a good heart center was amazing. And I said, wow, we got to make it faster and, you know, and repeatable. Because, again, he wants to be able to put in that same graph every single time. And that's what we're doing. And uh, nothing, nothing really surprising other than we are continuing our work. We've been at this for four and a half years. And uh, it's just... You know, consistently and uh, working with a great team. We've added uh, another uh, PhD doctor onto our team since we last met. And, uh, and with the money that we're trying to raise right now, we should then, we should be able to increase our staff, uh, begin our regulatory requirements, uh, add, add another pro one or two production sites so that we can really roll out when we're ready to go. Okay, that's great. Um, another observation that I had, uh, and I've, I've been meaning to ask you about this, is at the last event, you know, you had you had a line of people waiting to talk to you after the fireside chat we did. But one of the things I noticed was that it wasn't just uh, entrepreneurs 
um, you actually had investors in line as well to, to catch up with you and, and hear from you directly. So if you had any advice for the budding uh, startup CEO in this current environment and in light of all of your experience, what would that, how would you, what, what, what's a couple pieces of advice you'd give the startup CEO? And I'm going to ask you about the investors next. Let me just say this, and, and, and it's not because you're sitting there, okay, and that we're doing this interview together, but quite honestly, I tell people, if you're going to try to raise capital, try to attend this meeting because you will meet a lot of people that are there strictly for the purpose of investing in medical device companies. Uh, I think you have a great network of people that, that have come to your meeting, that participate in your meeting. In fact, uh, I have on my desk a document to sign with a potential uh, group of people to raise capital for me as well um, that we met directly and indirectly at your meeting. That's Not to mention, it's nice looking over the Pacific Ocean rather than about a foot of snow outside with a temperature this weekend of 18 below zero. That's great to hear. Thank you, Manny. Um, any comments for the investment community out there? I mean, you know, we've, it's, it's a new world we're living in. Has it been a challenge raising money in this new environment? Um, I suspect that you've figured out a way to navigate through things, but um, how has fundraising been in this climate? And do you have any feedback for those investors out there? Well, surprisingly to me, I thought that the COVID, the year 2020, was going to be brutal. In fact, as I was trying to raise money, I said, oh, this is a brutal year. But then at the end of the year, when we added up the numbers and we looked exactly how much we had raised, it was a good year for us. We were able to do it by consistently pursuing it. Yes, I believe that you should have person-to-person -person contacts with your people, and it's hard with the COVID, but, you know, and doing Zoom calls and telephone calls, it's hard. It's difficult, okay? I'm a kind of guy to touch, feel, you know, hug and kiss. I'm that kind of guy. But um, surprisingly, when we finally looked it all over, we were able to raise money during the COVID. And I think that the new year so far, although we're only one month into it, has been a good a good year so far. People are recognizing that medical devices are always going to be around. They're getting better. They're getting more exciting. There's a lot of technology that's now being implanted in the body. And in fact, uh, I'm looking at adding some very unique uh, devices onto my graph uh, that will be very, very interesting. And all that kind of exciting technology is there. And so investors are looking for things, okay? And, you know, we've had enough investment in the pharmaceutical. We've had enough investment in the COVID vaccines and things like that. But now there are still methods of how do we monitor these patients, particularly telemetry has been tremendous. You know, I can, I can see your heart by just putting my phone over your heart and, and I can see it. That kind of stuff is happening, all right? I, I'm looking at the possibility of how we can monitor our graph, once it's implanted, how do I do it without doing an angiogram? And we have a method of doing it, and we are looking to see how we can develop that. Do I need a little extra cash for that? Maybe. Maybe one of your investors might want to say, Manny, let us do that for you. Let us supply that capital for you. So anyway, there are a lot of ideas, investors that come to your, your meeting, and entrepreneurs that come to your meeting, will benefit because they're they're both looking for each other. Well, Manny, we can't wait to see you in May and uh, appreciate your support so much. Excited to see what you do next with Medical 21. LSI and, and myself personally are happy to hopefully in some small way be a part of the success that no doubt you're going to have. If any of our, uh, any of the folks out there that are watching this interview want to get in touch with you, before the meeting in May, how should they do that? Should they reach out to you on LinkedIn or how do you want them to contact you? I think the best way is the easiest way. I don't have a LinkedIn site. I purposely don't because I get 1,500,000 calls a day. But if you're really interested in talking to me, call me. It's called telephone. Use the telephone. It's 612-670-5507. It's as simple as that. Or 
medical21.com. You just doubled your uh, volume of calls, but I'm glad we get the message out. And uh, again, it's been, a, it's, been real, it's been great to catch up with you. And I hope that if you have some time, uh, we can have a nice dinner in May out looking at the Pacific Ocean. And can't wait to hear what's up next for you guys. Great. Thank you, man. Look forward to it. Thanks a lot again, Scott, for all your help, as always. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Stay out of the snow. Okay, thank you. All right. Take care, man. Thank you.